Hi guys, last time we talked about stereoisomers and I wanted to fit that into our chart. So if you remember, conformational isomers over here, um, same molecule, just different rotations around their bonds. So they look, they look different in 3D space, but everything's still the same molecule. Uh, everything's connected the same way. Over here, constitutional isomers have different connectivity, so there are different molecules. And then, um, if we wanted to add uh, stereoisomers, then I might have my cat, Ginger, in a position where she has a cone around her neck and she can't rotate, all right? And her stereoisomer would be a different molecule that would maybe have a different 3D shape, even though the connectivity is all the same. Um, they're, they're forced into a different uh, 3D spatial arrangement, which cannot be uh, rotated out of. So that usually happens it, with molecules with rings or double bonds. So the terms I'd like you to be able to define are conformers, constitutional isomers, and stereoisomers. They go by different names sometimes, so I've added some here, but um, I would prefer if you just use those terms. Here, conformational isomers or conformers see same connectivity here, just different rotation. So here we have conformational isomers, so same connectivity, but you see there was a different rotation around one of the bonds. Here, constitutional, because they differ in connectivity. And here, uh, we have a mistake here. This should be a double bond there. And you can see the double bond uh, introduces a a constraint, which is that this cannot rotate as it did over here. So these are two different molecules. <clears throat> these are also different molecules. And th these are the same molecule. So this is a bit tricky for people at first, just getting used to using the terms and the vocabulary to identify the relationship between the pair of molecules. So if I'm looking at these two, I want to go through the flow chart and sort of see which of these pairs it matches. So even though there's a double bond, okay, and you might think, oh, double bond, it's a stereoisomer, you have to look very closely at what the actual relationship is. So even though they have double bonds, notice um, their connectivity appears the same, but um, the double bond is actually in a different position, so their connectivity is not the same. So since they differ in connectivity of the double bond, these are considered constitutional isomers. Let's look at the next one now. We've got uh, one, two, three, four. This is butane, one, two, three, four. This is n-butane as well. So that's telling me they're the same molecule. And then looking at them in 3D space, you guys can probably see the methyl groups are eclipsed here and they are staggered here. So this is the eclipse and staggered conformation. These are conformers. So you can see there was a rotation around that bond in the middle. For this pair here, we have um, the same connectivity, just um, you know, rota rotation of that molecule. So this is um, conformers, or you can just say they're the same, same molecule. We actually can't see the conformation, which is the rotation of the bonds. We can't really see that with this kind of drawing, but we can with this kind of drawing. Okay, so go through these, and we'll go through them together in a few minutes, but try, try these on your own, see if you can figure it out. All right, guys, we're back, and we've got um, different formulas here, and one way I can tell right away is you, the first thing you wanna do is just check if they have the same number of carbons five carbons, five carbons, and then look for degrees of unsaturation. So we have a ring and a double bond on the left, two degrees of unsaturation, and one degree of unsaturation. So they've got to have different numbers of hydrogens. So this is a different formula. With these two, uh, I just converted the Newman into a line structure, and then so carbon in the front, carbon in the back, and the ethyl group in the back. Um, carbon in the front with a methyl group off of it, carbon in the back with a methyl group. So these are both n-butane, so they're different conformations though, but they're the same molecule. Um, different formulas, again, uh, use degree of unsaturation. You have one degree of unsaturation, two degrees of unsaturation. Here, different degrees of unsaturation. Here, this has one and this has none. 
Um, stereoisomers come in now with these double bonds, different configurations. So notice this one here is the same, but then this one here is opposite. So we've got the um, opposite or opposite and same side. Okay, so easy isomers around that double bond. The other one is the same. This one I redrew up here so you could see. Now if you have a hard time from here, you might want to count the carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me see if I drew this right. Carbon in the front, carbon in the back. Now I have too many methyl groups here. Okay, so I'm gonna redraw that. The way that I usually do these is I do carbon in the front here, carbon in the back, and the carbon uh, isopropyl group. This is isopropyl here, CH, CH32. Okay, so with this one, zoom in. Uh, if you have a hard time seeing the relationship, I recommend you name them. So this is 1,2-methyl, 1,2,3,4, 2-methyl-butane, 1,2,3,4, 2-methyl-butane. So they're actually the same molecule. And then we go down here to constitutional isomers because their connectivity is the same, but they have the same degrees of unsaturation. For five carbons, it's the same formula. Different connectivity, one's a ring, one's a pi bond. Uh, stereoisomers again because um, look at the double bond, this carbon. This carbon wins because it's attached to another carbon. This carbon over on this side, this carbon on this side, this carbon on that side. So you have opposite side, same side, so E and Z. So they're stereoisomers. And then here, these are the same molecule at the very end. Okay, so it's good practice. And we usually ask some of these on the exam, so practice.